Our honeymoon was so awful. After eight days and seven nights, we were totally unable to consummate the marriage. <laughs> Not because he didn't want to, because he couldn't. I just couldn't. We had rain for four solid days and couldn't go out outside of the condo. It wasn't rain. It was the biggest storm in yeah. like three years or something is what the radio said. We didn't even have a honeymoon. The roads were so bad that they closed them all off. There were police trying to make sure people didn't go out of town, and we went straight home. There was nothing. And one of the worst times on our honeymoon is when we discovered a rat in our room, and we had to pick up the sheets so the rat wouldn't climb up on the bed and get us. <laughs> I have to say the worst part of our honeymoon was the three and a half days she spent in the hospital with food poisoning. Because I ate a chili dog. The stories you're about to hear are true. The names have not been changed because there are no innocents. Each of the couples you're going to see on our show today is guilty of a honeymoon horror story. <laughs> That's next on Rolanda. You have made it through that exhausting wedding day. You're all packed, you're happy, you're in love, you're ready to go on that honeymoon, a honeymoon that's supposed to be filled with all of the most wonderful memories that a couple has for the rest of their lives. But as you are going to see, sometimes things can go horribly wrong on the honeymoon. But we at Rolanda believe that we should take life's lemons and make lemonade. So we decided to throw a contest today, and the winning couple is going to walk out of here with a second chance at honeymoon romance and a trip to Sandals in Antigua. Our studio audience is going to be busy today. They're going to be listening very carefully to select the lucky couple with the best, or should I say the worst, honeymoon horror story. Let's start the contest by introducing our first couple. This is Ron and Wendy Venable. The question to ask Ron and Wendy maybe is not what went right or what went wrong, what didn't go wrong. <laughs> you had a tough time on this honeymoon. Oh. Eight days. Eight days. Eight no, days first, of hell. Yeah, where did you go? Cancun. Cancun. To Cancun. Um, I think everybody probably wants to know why the marriage wasn't <laughs> consummated on the honeymoon. Well, because we couldn't. It, it just was like one thing after another. Everybody loses their luggage, they, which happened to us. We didn't have a room, which happened to us. But we finally got a room, and we kind of like hurried up to get in there to, you know. Mm -hmm. You yeah, know. <laughs> <laughs> do the dirty hula thing and <laughs> as we were in the midst of partaking in that I looked up and there was a bellman watching us because our luggage had been lost so he brought our luggage in and was watching us <laughs> so Ron sort of lost the spirit of the moment yeah. <laughs> oh, no. and it just went downhill from there wow it was did it start from the time you got on the plane? I mean, take us back. You'd gotten married. No, we, got, we got there. Everything was okay. We got to the, um, once we landed, it just it went downhill from the point we landed. We didn't get our luggage. We got the wrong room. They, they, we didn't have a room at the hotel, period. So they put us in another hotel. We got in, uh, went to dinner. Well, tried to do the, you know, consummating wow bit, right, the wow thing, <laughs> and the bellman got to watch us. He's probably the only guy that got to see anything interesting on our he whole He enjoyed honeymoon. your honeymoon. Yeah. Good time. Yeah. Good time. <laughs> we had dinner. I told Ron not to eat the salad. He did anyway. Got up the next morning, went to the beach. Uh, we're sitting at the beach. He decides... I got a little sick. It was like, you know, I can, I can deal with it. It's okay. So he Ron, a little sick in Cancun can well, be major. Well, especially on a 18 honeymoon. pounds. He lost, lost 18, 18 pounds, pounds in Cancun. Like, wow. Was it that Montezuma revenge yeah, thing? Yeah. yeah. We had, yeah. instead of having lingerie strewn around our room, we had Fruit of the Loom underwear his size <laughs> drying throughout the room because he went through like a couple pairs a day and we didn't have enough pairs of underwear for him. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, but it's true. So we... 
<laughs> we finally, we, he leaves the beach the first day, and, and he goes up to get ill. I don't I know. I'll be back. I'll just be back. He didn't tell. I don't he feel didn't well. want to admit just, it. You know, I don't want to ruin her honeymoon either. You know, so I, I'll just be back. So where, wait a minute, wait a minute, Ron. Where were you going to go? I was, to the room. I was going back to the room okay. to uh, take care of business, and then I was going to come back, and I so, figured it wasn't going to be that bad. You know, so, so I came back down. And, and he had left the only lawn chair on the beach because the beach was packed. And this French woman who didn't know the custom in Mexico decided that she was going to take off her shirt, her bathing suit, and oh. slather herself with lotion right next to me. So she was the only topless woman at the beach with, she was pretty, you know. Topless. Half, she was half, <laughs> a lot bigger than me. Top so, full. <laughs> very, very. So he comes back from being ill, and there's a woman sitting next to me rubbing banded soleil all over herself. <laughs> and, I was, um, I was supposed to ignore this. Right. I was just like... <laughs> I'm on my honeymoon. This is my only woman. Right, like, right. So, so what's going on here? You know? it's like, uh... So we went, we went through that, and then we had the 38 hours of him being on the throne. And finally, he told me, why don't you go shop till you drop, and I'll drop till I stop. <laughs> So I went to the lockbox to get our cash at the hotel, and the key broke off. So we had no money, and the and the hotel, because it was a new hotel, they said it was going to take a couple days to get a welder in. So we had no money, no credit cards, no nothing. I come back to the room. He's praying. <laughs> he could care less if I die. If I dropped off of Mexico, he was just dying. So you had no money. So no. what did you eat? There, there's this refrigerator. We ate honor bar that we didn't know. They screwed up the hotel, so we figured they threw in this refrigerator with all this stuff in it on Just the house. Just for you. Just for us. And, and it cost you? About 300 bucks. Oh, <laughs> hated when that happened. And then there was the hurricane right that next day. Oh, no. With the blown out windows and no food in the hotel because the hurricane came. So you ate more peanuts. We peanuts ate a lot in line of coke like... and squirt. He was drinking squirt, ironically <laughs> enough. Like it was going well, out of style. <laughs> Listen, if you have ever been in a hotel, you know, leave that little box alone. That's right. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. When we come back, we're going to meet more married couples who say if you think what you just heard is horrible, wait till you hear what happened to them. Next. <laughs> have a honeymoon horror story. Lady said, yeah, I got married. <laughs> we are obviously talking about honeymoons from hell today. Joining us now is another couple who is vying for the Rolanda Grand Prize trip to the tropics, Jack and Paulette Lang. They say they had so many mishaps that other honeymooners wouldn't even spend time with them. They called them the bad luck couple and wouldn't even get next to them. What in the world happened, you guys? Well, actually, Rolanda, it started even before the honeymoon and actually before the wedding, um, about a week before the yeah, wedding. Yeah, a week before the wedding, um, my car got stolen and um, one of the bridesmaids backed out of the wedding. And then two, two, days, two days before... Two days before the wedding... My uncle was on his way. My aunt and uncle were on their way from Nebraska to come to the wedding in San Diego. And about two hours after they got on the, on the train, my uncle died of a heart attack. On the train? Yeah. Oh, yeah. my and goodness. And so uh, my parents had to fly back to Nebraska and miss the wedding for, for his funeral. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So that was the beginning. And then we... You hadn't even gotten on the plane yet. Uh, no. no. Oh. We, hadn't even, we hadn't even started. And then, so then we got to the wedding and we forgot... We bought gallons of potato salad and coleslaw. We forgot those. Any silverware to pick up the, the food. Where'd yeah. you go? Well, we got married at, near where we live in San Diego. The, mm -hmm. On the honeymoon, we went to Jamaica. Okay. Yeah. And, but the night before, right after we got married, our wedding night, um, we, we got to the hotel, and they said we didn't have any reservations. It was about 1.30 in the morning. Oh, yeah. And no. well, what they told us was that, well, you should have been here before 6. And so, well, we prepaid. <laughs> well, my uncle just died. I just yeah. had a 50 million other things to do. Sorry. Yeah. So, so anyways, you know, we're talking to them. And they, she calls a taxi to get rid of yeah. us. 
Yeah, we, we didn't ask for one. Wait a minute. The receptionist at the hotel called a taxi to get you out the hotel. Yeah, yeah. the taxi driver walks in and he says, okay, we're here to take you somewhere. <laughs> and we said, we didn't call a taxi. And she said, no, I called it for you. Oh, God. And so he said, well, what if we pay for another room and then you can reimburse us later? She said, okay, so they had the security guard take us to the room. We walk in. There's a man in there in the shower. All his clothes yeah. are oh, on the no. bed. So I come back down. I'm crying hysterically in my wedding, wedding dress. dress. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm crying. I'm saying, you ruined our wedding. You ruined our wedding to the lady at the front desk. And she goes, okay, I admit it. I ruined your wedding night. <laughs> like, get out of here. See, everyone, <laughs> she ruined our wedding night. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like so they called us another tag. They, they didn't home. offer us another hotel, <laughs> another room Nothing. or anything. Get so then we went, we went back to our house, but we were starving. It was 3 o'clock in the morning, so we, we walked to the AMPM. We didn't have our vehicles because we lent them out to our friends yeah. to watch. Yeah. So we watched the AMPM and got two um, hot dogs for 99 cents. <laughs> and we ate those. By the time we ate those hot dogs, we were so mad this, that this we called the manager the back. <laughs> oh, no. And he, he says, um, which, which honeymoon couple are you that had the problem? Which one? Yeah. yeah, and he hung up on us. <laughs> so we called back and he hung up again. What was the worst part about the whole honeymoon? Well, I'm not sure if it was a part where, um, where I was standing in the ants and the ants were crawling up my legs and I didn't know it until they got into my pants. <laughs> into my panties and I'm going like this. Yeah, there was and, a whole army of ants. I mean, we, we took our shoes and... Oh, I, I, mean, I ran to the bathroom and poured water. By the time I was done, I had big welts. My legs swelled up like a balloon and I had to put my feet up. Oh, no. Then we're sitting there talking in the room, and there goes a rat right across in front of us. So I pulled all the covers on the bed because I'm like, I even woke up in the middle of the night and checked to make sure the covers weren't on the bed. Then we, we couldn't eat the food because, like everybody else, we got sick from the food. So we went to go buy a can of Pringles, <laughs> and they were $4 oh, for gosh. a can of Pringles. So we walked down to this other store, and this guy, he goes, do you want to buy some ganja? And Jack goes, What's ganja? <laughs> <laughs> and I go, he'll take some. <laughs> Honey, you might need some after that vacation. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, coming up next, we're going to meet a groom who came back to the hotel room only to find that his bride was gone. <laughs> she did leave him a note on the table, though. We'll be right back with that story. together. The Sunshine State, a chili dog, and an ambulance. <laughs> and what have you got? You've got John and Linda O'Brien's honeymoon. <laughs> They're here to share the saga of their horrible honeymoon. What happened, you guys? That chili dog scares me. The uh, sun wasn't shining in a lot of the places we've spent in our honeymoon. Oh, no. We uh, actually probably to lay the foundation down. We have to go back long before the wedding. We met in a car wreck. So that probably should have been an indication to us that our life was just going to continue to get worse. And the honeymoon did just that. We went down to Florida. Wait, 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 wait. Go back to the car wreck. <laughs> you guys didn't bang into each other, did yes, you? Yes. I rear into them. You're kidding. <laughs> get out of here. Yeah. And but I got the ticket. It was worth it, though. I got what I wanted. <laughs> And it only costs about $3,500. There you minus go. Minus the deductible. High maintenance kind of gal there. <laughs> we went down, to, uh, went down to Orlando, and on the first night down there, we went to uh, one of the amusement parks, one of the theme parks, and Linda had a chili dog and woke up the next morning from it just deathly ill. And we ended up, uh, she sent me off to, to go and have fun because I, I didn't want to ruin his day. His honeymoon, I mean, right? That's <laughs> both of ours, but I was at least going to try to enjoy it. And she sent me off, and I left thinking she'll be fine in a half an hour. So I took off and left for the day and when I came back uh, I was driving by myself and usually when we're together she's the navigator and I wasn't positive I was going in the right direction I wasn't seeing things yet that were familiar to me until I saw the fire truck coming up behind me <laughs> and I moved out of this way and let it go by and then I started to realize that things were starting to look a little familiar and maybe I was going the right way and in the rearview mirror now I saw an ambulance and I just started to get a sixth sense of nervousness and, and started to really pick up speed and keep that fire truck in sight. And as we got to the hotel, 
uh, the three of us, the fire truck, myself <laughs> on two wheels, and the uh, ambulance all pulled into the same hotel and up to the same complex. And I got out of the uh, out of the car and asked the uh, fireman where they were going and was basically ignored. And I asked again a little more emphatically, and he told me they had a sick woman in the room. And I asked him what room, and they told me, and I said, well, that's my room. <laughs> and we all bust in the door at the same time, and Linda was on the floor. She had gotten sick and called 911 and from got the up. dog. I didn't know where. I mean, I, I was vomiting every 10 minutes from 7:30 in the morning. This was like two in the afternoon. Oh, I mean, I was I I was blacking out. I mean, I was afraid I was going to die, and I didn't know where he was. So we loaded her up and took her to a to a walk-in medical center, and they gave her a shot to stop the vomiting. And I brought her back and put her to sleep. And when we woke up, she had said, I think you'd better fill the prescriptions that we got from the medical center. So I went off to the pharmacy to have the prescriptions filled. It took me a half hour to find a pharmacy, 40 minutes to have the prescription filled, not realizing as I'm sitting there that an ambulance is screaming past the, <laughs> the drugstore. So when I finally get back to the hotel, the lights are out, and I walk inside. There's a note on the door, and she's gone. She got sick again and called 911 a second time, and this time they took her away. Oh, God. So I had to go back to the, to the pharmacy the next day to see if I could get a refund on these $70 worth of prescriptions. No. And they wouldn't let me have it, so I offered to stand outside and sell them to the first person with the same symptoms. <laughs> <laughs> that is so, so funny. We got, got her out of the hospital three days later and went to, to Tampa and went for a ride the next morning and I wasn't feeling well and I got back to the hotel about an hour later, laid down and took a nap and woke up two hours later with a 103 degree fever oh, and no. by that night it was up to 105 and she was looking to call an ambulance. And I wanted I was... to put him in a tub with ice, but no way was he going to do you that. You guys sound like yeah. you have defied death it every was moment. She was, was looking bad. for a number in one phone book for the number for the ambulance. I'm looking in the other phone book for a number for jo Dr. Kevorkian. And between the two of us, <laughs> we're trying to find somebody to call. And uh, the next day, by about two hours before our flight, my, my fever broke and, and we flew home. Thankfully, the honeymoon was six months after the wedding because if it had been the next day, I probably would have just come back, hired a lawyer, and filed. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this, though, because you brought up a good point. I mean, it's such a horrible honeymoon. I mean, does that set you off on the wrong foot? There's some who would say, oh, God, your marriage is doomed. Those are, those are bad warning signs. There were some who did. <laughs> there were plenty who did. Uh, no, actually, we never really gave it a second thought. We just figured we'd have stories to tell our children or grandchildren somewhere down the road, hopefully a little bit different than the average honeymoon story. Well, you met under very bizarre circumstances, so it only oh, yeah. seems fitting your honeymoon would be a little bizarre. That it was. We should have known. <laughs> the handwriting was on the wall. We just weren't reading that day. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much. Coming up next, a couple who felt the earth move under their feet on their honeymoon, but they still didn't consummate their marriage. We'll explain that after this. <laughs> about horrendous honeymoon horror stories and our couples are now contestants to win the grand prize on this show for having the worst horror story we're going to send them on a free trip to sandals resort in antigua for the worst story can you imagine our audience is later going to decide who's going to win but i want you to meet our next couple here this is kirk and brenda crawford who not only survived an earthquake, stormy weather, and a nasty plumber on their honeymoon, but also survived not consummating their marriage then. What in the world was going on, you guys? Well, well, we couldn't believe it because of how hard it was to plan the wedding and go through the whole day of stress of the marriage itself. But um, when we got to the hotel, they said there was a problem with our suite and that they would have to put us in a room and we they'd come right and get us. It would be any minute. Now, where were you, first of all? We, we spent the night in Santa Monica the first night near where we were married okay. because we couldn't get out of town that day. And um, so we went to the room and we didn't feel comfortable starting kissing or getting intimate because any moment this bellhop was going to come and take us to our suite. And we heard about bellhops. <laughs> <laughs> and we really wanted to get to the honeymoon suite really, really bad. Yeah, I'd, we'd planned from the beginning that we wouldn't sleep together or anything and, I'd, and I had not planned to have, have sex with my wife until we were married. 
um, since a small child, and so we were quite anxious to, to be together <laughs> at, this, at this time. Hello. <laughs> um, so actually, over through all of it, it turned out that we had to wait at least four hours yeah. in this other room, waiting to, right after the wedding. And she lost her purse, and which had the key to the her luggage and everything. She couldn't get freshened up or anything. And it had my birth control pill in it, which I oh. really needed. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we we were really anxious to get upstairs. Yeah. yeah. What about the earthquake and the plumber and the storm? Well, the next morning, my sister Laura and my mom and dad met us for brunch at the hotel, which is um, was in an atrium. It was glass all surrounding us, and we had a major earthquake. And we heard glass breaking and people running around, and it was very, very scary. Um, my sister Laura turned to my mom and said, "Mom, I want to go back to Michigan right now." <laughs> and I said, "Kirk, I would like to go home because we." didn't know what condition our house was in. We have cats that were alone. The right. house was over an hour away from where we were. And, and we so couldn't. we wouldn't have had time to stop home before we got on the plane. So I, I wanted to cancel the honeymoon. They convinced me otherwise. So we went upstairs to get our bags. There was this glass table and a big, huge lamp smashed on the floor from the earthquake. Mm -hmm. And that, that set up the mood of the entire rest of the time we were there. We had uh, everything that could go wrong did go wrong. We had the worst rainstorm in three years in Maui happened <laughs> while we were there. The roads all flooded out. Four we had, days solid of We had to get a VCR and rent movies and watch them all day and night, which is exactly what we do every day at home. So we didn't feel like, <laughs> we, didn't feel like we were anywhere special at all. And we only brought three days worth of clothes. So on the third day, as we were doing laundry in our our condo, the rinse cycle spilled the entire contents of the water into our carpet and soaked it. Um, the management company said they would send a plumber and a carpet cleaner right away. We waited all night. We were in the middle of a candlelit dinner with wine and Got music. all the lights down and everything. And trying to get intimate, and this is when this happened. So we waited and waited and waited. No plumber ever showed. Finally, a girl came with a shop back that she didn't know how to use. She was not a carpet cleaner. She was, <laughs> I don't know who. And she looks around, and she's, oh, did your electricity go out too? <laughs> and we're like, no, we're on, the lights were off for yeah, the we're on our honeymoon. Dinner. We're trying to be romantic with candles. And <laughs> So we See, I think there's something up with these service folks. <laughs> they well, say they know where the honeymoon suite is and yeah. says, go there now, the lights but are out. <laughs> the next day when we called to check on why the plumber never came and to explain that we were out of clothes and we were on our honeymoon, could we please be moved to another room if we couldn't get the washer fixed? The management company was who went off on my husband started yelling at him and saying that we wouldn't ever stay in Maui again because their management company ran most of the condos and that they would send a plumber when they wanted to and they didn't care if we were on our honeymoon. And I was hysterical. I wanted to go home. I thought he was a nut and that he would come over and start trouble. We, call, we <laughs> called our travel agent and we couldn't change our tickets because they were restrictive. And now, were was, you guys fighting the whole time? Because when, when you're under that kind of pressure... Well, I was real tense, but she I was, was mostly crying. Was I wanted to leave. You know, I, I wanted to leave, and we couldn't get out of town. We couldn't even switch any place else because it's a small island, and it was the high season with spring break and everything. So there was nowhere to go. We couldn't go home, and it was such a disappointment. One day when it finally cleared up, we went driving, and out in front of the car runs this giant iguana. We run it over and kill it right in front of its owner. It was a pet iguana that was on the lawn. <laughs> he was on the lawn with the woman who owned it sunbathing, and we killed it. So it's like everything oh, yeah. that could happen. Kirk, all of this, and you hadn't even consummated your marriage yet. <laughs> no. Every time we tried to get romantic, something would happen. Every single yeah. night, something would happen. And it's just very disappointing. It was not what it we hoped weird. it would be at well, all. Well, I tell you, it's funny how horrible stories later can give you a good laugh. Yeah. That's, that's, that you got to give it to a good story. Yeah. Thank, yeah. You. Thank you. And from earthquakes to ice storms, we'll see how our next couple brave the elements after this. for 150 people and only 15 people show up. Well, that's what happens when you get married in the worst ice storm of 1990. Just ask Larry and Jenny Bingham. They say that their troubles didn't stop there either. What happened? Where'd you go? Those other couples were all lucky. At least they got to go somewhere. <laughs> there was three inches ice all over everything. We couldn't go nowhere. We just had to go home. 15 people. Did you cry, Did you cry all through the wedding? Well, I didn't know anything about it because they forgot me at home. I, 
Uh, yeah, we were supposed to get married at 7 o'clock at night. And um, at 5 till 7, I call the church, and my future sister-in-law, Deb, answers the phone. And she says, where are you? I said, well, I'm at home. And she says, what are you doing there? I said, everybody forgot me. Somebody come and get me. So then, what did you say? What did you tell them? I the told church? them she had till 7.30 to get there, and she could pick me up at the tavern on the way through. <laughs> We, we were high school sweethearts. We've known each other for 10 years. Uh, you know, we've been together for 10 years. And he, it took me five to get him in to a tuxedo in a church. <laughs> you know, so I mean, this was like, I was panic city. Well, on top of it all, my bridesmaid goes into labor. And she wasn't due until January. And she got a baby uh, two hours after we were married. I got a beautiful blonde haired blue eyed little niece named Alyssa. Hi Liz. <laughs> and um, my uh, wedding dress was ruined. I didn't have one. I called around two hours before my wedding to You're find kidding. a dress. I get my sister-in-law's dress. She's five foot three. I'm six foot tall. <laughs> and so you had um, a mini dress. <laughs> yeah, this, this dress is like busting at the seams all over the place. But I did have one. St. Louis Airport loses my veil, my flowers, my boutonnieres, um, mm -hmm. everything. My aunt in Indiana had made them all for me. And um, she didn't even get there because of all the ice and the snow and everything. State troopers were blocking roads. The only way that we could even get anywhere was four wheel drive vehicle. Oh God! Where did you live then? We we live in Illinois. Oh yes, and those are tough storms. Yeah. yeah and so after something like that, I mean, you guys deserve a wonderful honeymoon. Yeah, that's kind of what we thought. <laughs> but it did. <laughs> but what happened? Oh. Then we, we tried to get out of town, and state cops are out there shutting the roads down, won't let nobody leave. There's three inches of ice all over everything. It was three days before we go anywhere. And then, then I had to go back to work, so. Well, not to mention the fact it's Christmas Eve. We got married four days before Christmas. See, oh, we were supposed to spend. Uh, up until Christmas Eve in a big hotel with the jacuzzi and the spa and just kick back and relax and you know not have to worry about anything especially anything that happened at the wedding <laughs> and then we didn't get to go anywhere so what did you do at home all that time we can't say that on national television <laughs> hey honey at least you got to do it <laughs> <laughs> some things can't be stopped <laughs> yeah, I gotta tell you though uh, the, one of the worst things that happened to us, though, is we, we went home. Six o'clock in the morning, the phone is ringing off the wall. And we just thought, well, we're just not going to get it. We're going to let everybody think that we're gone. Finally, the phone is rang for like 10 minutes. I pick up the phone. It's my father-in-law on the phone saying, you better not have went anywhere. I was coming out looking for you. <laughs> I oh, wanted to make God. sure you guys didn't get anywhere because they'd been all kinds of wrecks and all this kind of stuff and the roads being shut down. And I was like, Hang on a minute, Gary. You can talk to your son. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah. What was the worst part of it? The worst part was the fact that we had, been, we had planned and planned and planned for so long to have a beautiful wedding. That was the one thing I'd always wanted, was a beautiful wedding, a wonderful honeymoon, and we didn't get any of it. <laughs> it was oh. a disaster. Well, we're going to give you a chance to have a second romance. <laughs> That's horrible. That's the reason we're doing this show today, because we said, doggone it, everybody deserves a honeymoon. So we said that we'll take the worst honeymoons we've heard of, and we're going to give you a chance to have the best. And when we get back, the audience, get ready, folks, we are going to get to choose, get to evaluate all of these honeymoon horror stories, and select the one lucky couple who we are going to send Thanks to the Rolanda Show, to the tropics. So we'll find out who the lucky winner is going to be right after this. Honeymoon horror stories, and before we go any further, we want to show you where that one lucky couple with the worst story is going to be going. The beautiful Sandals Antigua is considered one of the world's best. When you discover this hidden treasure, you will discover moments to treasure forever.
Wander through romantic gardens or just soak up the sun on a breathtaking beach known as Dickinson Bay. The most striking features include exotic beachfront suites and four pools clustered around pastel-hued architecture. At night, why not just let the games begin with casino gambling nearby? Sandals Antigua on a stretch of unspoiled beach beyond any stretch of the imagination. We'll get to go to the tropics. Before we make our decision, why don't we ask a few questions? Anybody have any questions for the couple? Come on. This question goes to anybody on the panel. With all the rocky starts, was it all worth it? Oh, you better yeah. believe it. Oh, isn't that great? Let that yeah. deserves an applause. <laughs> Wendy, you were one of the first to raise your hands. I mean, you, when you start off on a rocky it, road. When, when they said for better, for worse, we had no idea that the worst was like that day. <laughs> <laughs> and eight days following that. But I have to say, this last 10 years, I'd do it all over again in a minute. It's our anniversary, July. Oh, uh, today? In July. In July. 10-year anniversary oh, in July. Wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Another question over here. I want to know when did couple number one consummate their marriage and <laughs> where? <laughs> well, we we weren't speaking on the way home, <laughs> so it took about another ten days. But it was worth the wait. It took how long? No, it didn't take ten days. Ten days. Well, what about couple number four there, Kirk and Brenda? When did you guys finally uh, consummate your marriage? As soon as possible. <laughs> you know, we're Christians, so we had been waiting for years for that moment, so as soon as we could. <laughs> uh, how long after the, the horror stories began, into the honeymoon, within that soon, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I just want to know why you want to try it again <laughs> after all this stuff. <laughs> why would you do this? It cannot be any worse. Don't, don't say that. Please. Don't say, please don't put that out there. You know how Murphy's Law is. You know what's really funny is this is the season of weddings right now. There are many people getting married. I talked to this couple right here. You guys are, what's your name? George. And you guys are getting married next year. Right. What do you think when you hear all these horror stories? Maybe we shouldn't go. I don't know. <laughs> No, it's been great so far, so it can't be any worse than theirs. Yeah. Any advice that you guys would give, like some past mistakes as you look back and said, you know, we could have stopped this if this Don't had happened? Don't get married in December. <laughs> <laughs> you got married in December? No, but you, you're right. Honey, there could be a storm anytime. Yes. Alka-Seltzer. <laughs> Alka-Seltzer. And number three there, uh, John and Linda, what would don't you say? Don't eat any chili dogs. <laughs> and don't eat chili dogs. So you got that. No <laughs> chili dogs. Okay, any other questions before we have our big vote here? Was there another question? Last, any questions that you want to ask each other? <laughs> Veronda, I'd just like to comment that we have four children. So, I mean, to get away from all our kids, boy, this would make it great. I'll That's tell right. you. <laughs> No, that's right. No, that's right. When I say the word honeymoon to you, is there anything that, that, that do you feel anything inside? What do you, what do you think? I mean, I know we've been having a good time here, but go on. Fear. Fear. Terror. We that is so horrible, because when you say honeymoon, you're supposed to go, oh, yeah. But after that, you know, we, we haven't gone away since that time, other than car trips where we could get, like, really back to where we came from quickly. If anything went wrong, you know, because it's you spend all that money and then something like that. It's just a, a, a little gunshot every that, single you know? day. There's a problem, a big problem. Mm -hmm. And it's like that's a lot of money to spend, especially when you're newlyweds. That's right. One of my favorite sayings, I, I apply it to anything in life, is when life gives you lemon, make it's lemonade. lemonade. <laughs> and when you look back at the, what was the, the toughest thing starting off a marriage, did it, in a strange way, make your relationship tighter? Did it do anything oh, for you so. there? Yeah. Go on and answer that, Linda. You... Yeah, well, I know he stands by me when I'm sick. <laughs> <laughs> for better, for and worse, for sicker, for worse. Visits me in the hospital. <laughs> uh, anything else that any of you couples can say that this horrible experience, what it did for your life together? I, can, I say if we can make it through this, we can make it through anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, obviously, nothing in your marriage has been worse than the honeymoon. 
No. No. That's a whole Not yet. Okay. Any other questions? Or we're going to take a break, let you think one more time. Audience members, you, you think at home, too, about who you think should be the winning couple to get to go to Sandals Resort in Antigua. And we'll be right back with the winners in the vote after this. I'd like each of you to think of one other last-ditch effort to win this trip. Think of something else that might have happened on the honeymoon you didn't have time to get to before. And talk to us about what happened. Couple number one. Well, we, as the hurricane was reaching its peak, we were attacked by the couple, the other honeymoon couple from hell. <laughs> that when we could leave the room because Ron was visiting the bathroom so much, they would find us no matter where we went and no matter what we did and argue. They would fight and then tell us we had attitude problems because we didn't want to be with them because they were fighting. <laughs> so we finally shook them loose, and that was the day we were coming home. Okay, then, yeah. let's remember that Ron and Wendy Venable are the couple who had Monta well, at least Ron did, had Montezuma's Revenge, paid 300 bucks for peanuts and Coca-Cola out of the, the, the refrigerator in the hotel, and had their cash locked in the hotel lock box because the hotel locked, lost the key or something, right? The hurricane. Okay, and the hurricane. <laughs> of course, can't leave out the hurricane. The Couple number two, Paulette and Jack Lang. Well, um, after I slipped on the floor and almost dislocated my shoulder and my hip, then um, the people we were hanging out with, they said, well, we're not going to um, hang out with you anymore because you guys are really bad luck. And all of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden, the chandelier above my head exploded and smoke filled the whole room. <laughs> and they go, see you later. And they went to the room. <laughs> oh, my God. Remember Paulette and Jack? <laughs> also had the dead uncle on the train, <laughs> the rat in the room, and ended up with two for one 99 cent hot dogs. <laughs> and as we speak of chili dogs, right? <laughs> it's John and Linda O'Brien. Remember, Linda had the chili dog and got sick. What is this? Hot dogs on honeymoons. <laughs> and John had the 104 degree temperature and, and wanted to call Dr. Kevorkian. <laughs> what else happened? Well, we'd like to just be able to spend some time together together and alone without 80-year-old roommates with doctors who have to come in every few minutes and without the tubes hanging out of her arm. And uh, <laughs> we find it's a lot easier to move around on a beach without the IV bottle. So yeah. we, just, yeah. we just like the opportunity to give that a try. Yeah. I think that's, that's interesting to hear what this honeymoon will mean to you, too. Um, Kirk and Brenda, remember they went through the earthquake, the dead iguana, and the marriage not being consummated. So, well, until a little later. Yeah. We, we want to get that in there. What else happened on this trip? Well, we had booked a, a trip to go snorkeling because I've never been snorkeling before. And most of our things we had booked were canceled due to weather. But this one, they st st stuck it out. We got on the thing. It was sprinkling on and off. We went to, I, went, I saw a pool of fi a school of fish off the bow. And I thought, this will be neat. I'll dive in. I'll get to touch these fish. Dove in, cut up my arms and legs because they were the fish that have spiky uh, fins all over them. Um, so I'm like shark bait here with blood in the water and everything. And um, then when we got out of the water, when we were snorkeling one time, the, the snorkel had disappeared. It was usually attached to the mask and it was gone. And this was rented snorkel gear that we had, you know, put a huge deposit down to, to take for the day. So we didn't have much luck snorkeling either. Okay. And couple number five, Larry and Jeannie. Got in the, caught in the ice storm, never got to have a honeymoon. Jeannie was in a tiny little wedding gown and, <laughs> and just had a real rough time, almost got left at home. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't have a reception either, Rolanda. No. Uh, the six people got to come to our reception. The band canceled because they couldn't get there. We had cake for like two months. <laughs> and my nephew fell and busted the punch bowl on top of it all. <laughs> so, I, you know, I, that, it was a rented punch bowl, too, by the way. Oh, God. So, yeah, you know, I mean, it was just one thing after one another. One horror after another. That was the wedding for 150 people, and only 15 showed up. That is a horror story. Let us take our votes now. Are you ready, audience? Yes. Okay. 
Let's show it by applause. I'm going to name each one of the numbers, couple number one, couple number two, and we'll, sh we'll vote on applause. We have our, our nifty applause counter there, and we're all ready. Couple number one, Kirk, oh, I'm sorry, Ron and Wendy Venable. Okay. Couple number two, Paulette and Jack Lang. Couple number three, John and Linda O'Brien. Couple number four, Kirk and Brenda Crawford. And couple number five, Larry and Jeannie Bigham. another round of applause. This is <laughs> so now, what are you thinking? What, what does this honeymoon really mean to you? Well, it's the one we never had, so it, I'm happy. Yeah. Thank you, audience. <laughs> <laughs> they said we're leaving the four kids with grandma and we're heading out. Yeah. Um, come on up here. What's your name? My name's Carol. Okay, Carol said she was going to be the audience representative who's going to tell why the audience chose this couple. Well, because they never really did have a chance to get out and go anywhere. And uh, from the sound of it, they really love each other. They have four children and they're still together. They deserve it. They've stuck it through. That's right. You know, so they look like uh, they really need this Antigua vacation. And I hope the weather's good for them. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. to know what all you guys ate because she's not going to eat it. <laughs> I tell you, one thing that is an awful lot of, re very refreshing, is when we can take some of the difficult times in life and sit back and finally laugh about it, you know? So it's been fun laughing with you and thanks to all of you couples because you really gave us a wonderful, a wonderful hour, thank the good you. laughs. Thank and you. thank you audience for your good votes and we'll see you next time on Rolanda. <laughs>